today on Be Something Wonderful. When feeling trapped by 3D circumstances with nothing moving, do this. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back and good morning from the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Big video for you today. I want to talk about this client. She's a new client, but has been on the channel now for almost five months. Her story is powerful. It's remarkable. It's a masterclass when you're feeling really trapped by 3D circumstances or conditions, feeling like nothing's moving in the direction that you want it to move, that, that when you start making it about you, when you move within and, and stop making it about specific persons in your life, stop making it about others, stop making it about your ex uh, colleagues or your boss. It's not, start making it, stop making it about your family and you make it about you. That reality is all about you. Wow, things shift. And this is what happened with her. She was, she said, she described it that she was almost homeless, right? Living on, in the apartment, on a, the sofa of her friend's apartment. And, and uh, no money because, she, you know, she had a little savings but she had no job. And it all started, she described, with, with a, the relationship that felt that she said fell apart with her specific person. So she was trying to, she said, I was trying to pick up the pieces, imagining my ideal life, imagining my SP, you know, falling back in love with me, imagining getting that offer, that good job. She goes, but all of it, it really, as I watched the videos, as I really got it, I, and she said specifically one video, and I think we did a short on this that, that she watched, where I, I talked about manifesting a specific person. The one thing to really do, to do is make it about you, right? It's not about everybody else. It's about you. And she goes, that really resonated with me, not just with my specific person, but with my entire life. I've been making it about the circumstances and others out there. I've been trying to imagine them doing something different. I would try to imagine that being different. My S, where it was really about imagining I'm that new person, that I'm different, that I am that identity. Hear the power here. She, she has turned her whole life around, right? Has her own place again, it has a new job, is back with that specific person. They're starting out again. All of this, she said, is, is from not putting it out there, not looking outside at that circumstances. So I want to talk about this because this was such a powerful masterclass that she really wanted just to share with me. So you always form your reality according to your ideas and expectations. Seth, uh, that non-physical that was channeled through Jane Roberts in the 1970s, you always form your reality according to your ideas and expectations. But about whom? About, it's about you. We want to think it's about the outside world or the outer circumstances or even our changing thoughts and feelings where we start, we, we start having all of these thoughts and feelings and we're starting to try, we want to feel better. We want to, we want to flip thoughts. We want to control our feelings, right? All, it's not about that. It's about you. It's about who are you? It's a, that's the ultimate self-concept. Right? You're not your thoughts, you're not your feelings, you're not the outer circumstances, you're not what that SP or a specific person said to you, you're not what that last, in the last job, what that boss uh, said to you. She shared some stories about this. You're not any of that. It's about you. You are source. It's about you as source. Source of all of it. When you really lock and load on that, then you got it. Then you're, you're, you know that it, 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 that it is that limitless you that creates it all. That's the ultimate self-concept or idea of who you are, right? You are the Christ, the son of the living God, Matthew 16, 16. She mentioned this in the, in the video. It always gives me tingles. And when, when Jesus is asking his disciples, who do you say I am? But who do you say I am? As, they, as when he, he asked at first, who do people say I, the Son of Man, am? And they went off on a tangent, right? Describing circumstances, others, right? Jeremiah, John, John the Baptist. 
representing the outside world, representing changing thoughts and feelings, but who do you say I am? And knowing this, that it's all you, that you are that Christ, the Christ, the son of the living God, you are, the, you are that I am awareness, then, then you only need, as, as Jesus said in that, in that show on Netflix, The Chosen, you only need me, meaning you only need your own self, your own I am awareness, your own awareness of who you are. It's not about anybody else. Knowing this, make your physical 3D experience a show of source. Expect it to unfold perfectly no matter what. This came up in two sessions yesterday, right? Where she says, I was really trying to force reality. I was trying to force the circumstances. I was trying to force that my specific person to love me. I was, I was trying to force my, my ex boss to keep me on the job, even though, even though I wasn't identifying as that person thriving, right? I was trying to force all of those circumstances. It's not ever about a show of force. It's about a show of source. And I had fun with that yesterday. I said, that it's a show of source, you as source. It changed your whole life. It turned it all around. Remember, yes, she was still imagining and all of that, all the techniques, but it wasn't about those. It was about her conviction of her as source. And then those techniques became enchanted, right? They became magical. They became powerful. A show of source. Expect it to unfold perfectly no matter what. Right? Expect good in your life. Expect that you're a source and that everything's unfolding perfectly because that's what you want. That's what you say. That's what you assume. That's powerful. A show of source means to stop trying to make 3D reality and circumstances be something that you are not. Hear this. This is big, right? Not that they are not but that you are not. Stop trying to, to force things, 3D reality, the people around you, everything else, to be something that you're not conscious of being. You, you remember your entire life experience is who and what you're conscious of being. Reality can't change. Your experience of reality can't change until you change your experience, until you change who and what you're aware of being, who and what you're conscious of being. You're only ever experiencing the, co the contents of your consciousness, who you decide you are. That's powerful. Instead, the clear, here I am, by assuming you're already that which you desire to be and expect reality to form around who you are being. This is a discussion. Truth, uh, you know, I've talked about that um, when God and uh, the, the, the conversation between God and Moses at the burning bush. She brought that up yesterday. She goes, that here I am is so powerful to me. That, that's what she was saying. Here I am by assuming you're already that which you desire to be and expect reality to form around who you're being. She goes, I just expected it after that. I wasn't forcing things. She became a show of for, a source versus a show, versus a show of force, right? Remember, it does form around who you are being. It's not about a show of force. It's not about reacting or trying and doing. That's what a show of force is. You're reacting to reality. You're reacting to others. You're trying to force them. We're trying to make things go your way. You're trying to do things to fix that lack that you're feeling and experiencing to improve the 3D you that you think something's wrong. Instead, making it about a show of source, instead of reacting, Create, get, it, get into the mode of creating your reality. Instead of trying, it's about being. Instead of doing, it's about expecting. Wow. Remember, it doesn't mean you're not going to do anything. Remember, do, you're going to take action. There's always action to take, but there's nothing ever, ever to do. <laughs> nothing ever, ever to do. There's nothing to do, ever. It's about, it's about taking action, but from, from that idea of expecting reality to unfold for you, right? The way you want it to be, by being who you want to be. Then all the actions that you take are en enchanted, they're enlightened, right? It, it's about taking action with the conviction and assumption of fulfillment. That's the difference. From that conviction and assumption of fulfillment, everything becomes enchanted. So that feeling of being trapped, that she was talking about, or in bondage, right? Right, you're just in bondage. 
by the, to the 3D circumstances or by the 3D circumstances with nothing appearing to be moving, moving or unfolding for you as you would like it to be, is created by your concept of yourself and your assumptions about the world, that it's out there that it's about them, that it's about your specific person in that third party, that it's about the, the people that you believe are not treating you with right or not treating you with respect, it's a, or it's about your ex-colleagues and your boss, or it's about others, your friends, right? Or it's about the world, right? The world that must be changed, influenced, or moved by force or by effort. Do you see it? We make it about that. But you're, remember, but you're called upon by your higher self, to free yourself from those limiting, lowering thought, lower thoughts, lowering, <laughs> lower thoughts of I am not. Yet who and what I desire to be. So hear this. You're called by, there's a calling. There's a voice calling you. It's your I am awareness, right? Of your higher self to free yourself from those limiting, lower thoughts of I am not yet who and what I desire to be. Your self-concept is the filter through which you see reality. Remember, there's just ultimate reality. It's pure love, it's pure bliss, it's pure awareness. But how you see that, you see it through your self-concept. That's why Jesus asked that question. Who do you say I am? Because you see everything, you filter everything through your identity, through who you say you are. That's why so many coaches talk about self-concept. But many talk about how to improve it. In other words, how to improve the concept of your 3D self. But it's not about that. It's about identifying with who you really are as source of your reality, right? It's, it's not your thoughts that are inherently limited. It's your assumptions and your ideas of who you are. Do you see, the, all those changing thoughts and feelings are manifestations of the, your assumptions and ideas of who you are, of that self-concept. So it's about a top-down approach to saying, who am I? And then all those thoughts, and there's nothing wrong with any thought or assumption. They're just filters. They're just filtering how you see the world based on who you say you are. So there's nothing inherently wrong with them. You've just got to lift them up to that higher thought, right? Transform them into that higher thought of, of who you really are. That's powerful today. You assume, you're sitting within, you're, you're, you assume that you're sitting within unwanted 3D circumstances, feeling trapped. But none of those conditions have reality without you. So you're looking out there saying, I'm trapped by these circumstances, but those circumstances don't exist. Those conditions don't exist without you. So it's about you. Like Seth, through Jane Roberts said, you sit within the miracle of yourselves and ask for signs, it is your inner eyes I would open, right? Like God calling to Moses at the burning bush, from the midst of the bush. That's what it says. That's what it says in scripture. God was calling to Moses from the midst of the bush. From the, it's, like, it's like your higher self calling to you from the middle of all those 3D circumstances, from the messy middle. Your higher awareness is calling you, is calling upon you to answer, here I am. It's about a show of source, to take a stand in your awareness. Do you see, you're not separate from any of this. Those 3D conditions are, are projections from within you. It's all reality. So your higher self is there with you in the midst of those conditions, in the midst of the, in the middle of everything with you, calling you from that messy middle say, and saying, where are you and who are you? And your answer, like Moses, is here, I am. Wow. That's powerful. That's a show of source. Instead of trying to force 3D conditions to change or turn away or ignore them or try to destroy them, get rid of them, right, which she was trying to do. She had some stories there, right? Really trying to, try to destroy that third party, trying to get rid of it, right? Be curious about them. Right? Be curious about them because they can't exist without your awareness. Get curious and fascinated that interesting that I'm seeing this because you get to, you give it light. It can't exist without you. Know that they mean nothing. That's why Jesus said in that scene from the pool of Bethesda in the Netflix show, The Chosen, it means nothing. 
It does nothing. They, they do nothing without you as source or the light that you give, or that you're the light that gives them reality. You see it? Expect fulfillment to be unfolding under all conditions, in all circumstances. Do you see? It doesn't matter. They mean nothing. You should expect fulfillment under all conditions, under all circumstances, because you decide what those circumstances and conditions become, right? As you stand and take a stand and here I am, right? So Moses said in, in, in scripture, right? I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burning. He was, mar he was marveling at the bush, the burning bush was not burning, right? The, the bush was not burning. It was, it was, there was a big fire, but the bush didn't burn up. The bush could represent, think about the bush representing your 3D physical you and circumstances with the light of your I am awareness burning within you. Do you see? So it's not about, that light's within you. You're still intact, right? You're, you're uh, unharmed by anything. That I am awareness being doesn't consume and destroy it purifies and renews. That was the message, right? That I am awareness, that light that you are, that was representing the fire that God spoke from the burning bush, right? That light that never consumed the bush. It never burnt it up. It doesn't consume it or destroy it. Instead, it purifies it and renews it. Do you see it? Start looking at those conditions as you, as you are the light that gives them reality. They will transform, they will renew, they will be purified in you standing in your knowing that they mean nothing other than the story that you give them, other than the meaning you give them, no matter what they look like. That's powerful, right? And Moses, he wanted, Moses was, was curious, be curious, right, about that, the, those conditions. Be curious, know that you're the light that within all of it, you're at the center of all of those conditions. Right? They don't exist without you. Right? That, that bush representing the physical you and the circumstances. In the light of your own I am awareness burning within, saying, where are you? The recognition, in other words, of your ideal, of your identity. What you would like those conditions to, to be. What you would like your life to be. Right? It all comes from you. That I am awareness doesn't consume and destroy. It purifies and renews. That's powerful. That was the message there. So, Jesus, your I am awareness, right, says this in Scripture. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill, right, in the New Testament. To see the fulfillment behind all appearances, within and behind. In other words, within and behind that burning bush is the light that you are. And that light didn't come to destroy anything, but to fulfill, to renew, to purify, Right? Moses turning aside to investigate, right? investigating this marvelous burning, this bush that's not really burning. It, it represents you turning within, right? opening your inner eyes, as Seth said it through Jay Roberts. Right? It, was your, it was your inner eyes I would open. Recognizing yourself, I am, awareness, as the one and only source. Unaffected and untouched by the appearances by declaring, here I am. You're untouched by, by what appears to be those burning appearances, right? You're untouched by all of it, right? And I, in, in other words, I am in Barbados and I went first class, as Neville Goddard teaches when he talks about um, Abdullah and the story of him wanting to go to Barbados, right? And Abdullah says to him, you went to Barbados and you went first class, <laughs> right? I, I'm that which I, did, I imagine, assume, and affirm I am no matter what. That's the lesson there. You're untouched by all of it. You get to determine what it all means to you. Such a powerful story today. That burning desire, another sort of way you can look at the burning, the story of the burning bush in Moses and God, that burning desire to know yourself experientially as source, as God, as I am awareness, burns forever within you. It never, it's never consuming or destroying you, but rather it's renewing and purifying you through your new experiences, I, uh, all that is. This is powerful. I'm going to even talk about this on our live stream this morning on the membership channel at 9 a.m. Because some of you ask, oh, well, well what, if, what if I don't, if I feel whole and I don't have any desires, then I'm not going to be motivated or have anything. But remember, what is the desire? 
It's that burning desire to know yourself as source. That's always there, to know yourself as life, right? It forever burns within you, but it never consumes you. It never destroys you. It never traps you in any three circumstances. You're never trapped, right? Like Moses being called upon to free the Israelites from bondage in Egypt to the promised land, right? The Israelites in this case, representing those, those thoughts that, that, that are being filtered through that assumption that you're in bondage to the conditions, right? So it's freeing those thoughts to, 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 mer to become that higher thought of who you really are, right? You're called upon by your higher self to renew and purify your assumptions and ideas. That's what those Israelites represent. Those, those assumptions and ideas that I'm trapped, that I'm in bondage, you're, that I am awareness is calling on you to renew and purify those assumptions and ideas of who you really are. Hear that. Who are you? What are the assumptions of yourself? Purify those, renew those, put them through, through the filter that I am already who I desire to be. Free yourself from feeling trapped by wanting and desiring circumstances to be different and knowing that they already are different. That's how you free yourself. To, when you look through the eyes of source, when you look through the eyes of your higher self, that you're not trapped by anything. That, though, that it, it's not, instead of wanting and desiring and craving for those circumstances to be different, know that they already are different. Right? Know that you're not in bondage to anything. Lift those lower assumptions up to a higher assumption that I am source and there is no other. I am God and there is no other. I am that I am, right? Because you are source and there is no other. <laughs> How fun. So you're called upon to remove the limited assumption and ideas of who you are and your focus and attention on the manifested physical conditions, right? Those inner limiting thoughts and outer circumstances, right? It's those inner thoughts and feelings in those outer circumstances. You're called upon to remove yourself from those limiting assumptions. Remove them, right? To know whenever you stand within the 3D, wherever you stand in the 3D world, you're standing on holy ground. This is the lesson from, from Moses at the burning bush as God talks to him, right? You're already whole, complete, and fulfilled in that which you desire to be. That's why God said to Moses as Moses was going, getting closer, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. In other words, what does that represent? What's the metaphysical message there? Remove those limiting, drop those limiting ideas or assumptions. Purify them, renew them. Lift that lower thought of those Israelites up to the light of being of who you are. That you're whole, fulfilled, and complete. You're always on holy ground. So wherever you are, you're not trapped in 3D circumstances. Wherever you stand, you're standing on holy ground. In other words, you're holy. You're whole, you're complete, you're fulfilled. Wherever you stand. But when we take on those limiting thoughts, when we see through those limiting thoughts and assumptions, it feels like we're not, right? You gotta remove your sandals from your feet. Drop those limiting thoughts and know that there's nothing limiting you. This is what this new client and subscriber did. When you're feeling trapped by 3D conditions with nothing moving, do this. Identify with that higher thought, with that higher new you. Know that you're not trapped by any condition, right? Start, stand in that affirmation, stand in that, make it about you. That's what she did, right? Make it about you, you, your I am awareness. That's what, that's what you want to do there. When you're feeling trapped and nothing moving, it's about you. Make it about you, not about the 3D circumstances, not about the outer conditions, not about others. Making it about you standing in your knowing that you are source and there is no other, that you are that awareness. Stand in that conviction while imagining your wish fulfilled, while assuming that you're that person that you desire to be, while affirming that new life that you want. And then watch how fast things change. I am your host, Tom Karen. And this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on our videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, The Ambassadors, at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful, for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, and for being part of our membership channel. In just a few minutes, 
like 25 minutes from now, we're going to be coming live on our membership channel. And it's going to be our fourth live stream here of the year, our 13th live stream in all to be broadcast exclusively on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel where I'm going to answer your questions that you've been sending to us. And boy, have we been receiving questions um, on the live event. Now, also answer questions in the chat. That's at 9 a.m. this morning, Pacific Coast Standard Time, just 25 minutes from now. Join us. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for, for uh, that daily support and your lovely comments. This is Tom Karen here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful with great love, with great love, light, and infinite gratitude. Until next time, we'll see you soon.